what happened? Over and over and over and over again. We repeat the same cycle over and over. This is what I did. This is what happened to me. This is what I did. This is what happened to me. And yes, it happened. But now it's time to switch it, acknowledge that it happened, and start speaking life to that thing so what happened to you will not affect your future. Or it will not identify you as a hurt person and you can go on to becoming who God has created you to become on this place he called earth. Are y'all understanding me yet? Yes. So those things come by sowing words inside of you. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you hit it because it says in on page 30, uh, it says bitterness is an attitude sin. Yes. It discharges other sins such as, at, do I need to stand up to read this? Mm -hmm. Uh, such as attitude, self-pity, mm -hmm. unteachableness, uh, revenge, prideful ambi ambition, arrogance, unforgiven spirit, yes. negative, mm. critical attitude, yes. vengeance, and gossip. My God. So that, all of these different things, discharge, it comes on the attitude problem. You guys get that? Yeah. There's four things I want to deal with. I want you to write these down. I'm going to deal with one at a time so that you can write this down. There's a way that a seed is planted, okay? A negative seed is planted in us. One way it comes or one way it enters into us is by our eyes, by your seeing, by what you see. Listen to me. It's not an issue or it's not a problem of you seeing certain things. It's what your mind does with what you see. Are y'all hearing me yet? Yes. It doesn't make a difference of what you see. It's what your mind triggers or where your mind controls that thing and what you see. It's where your mind takes what you see to. You, uh, your eyes can see one thing. It has to trigger your mind, and your mind tells it what it sees. Now, you can gain control of what you see by renewing your mind. How do you renew your mind? By speaking things to yourself so that those things will get inside of you, and what is inside of you, your mind pulls those things out, and you be seeing what your mind wants to say. That's true. Oh, y'all, you got to get right. this. You guys You're understand right. that? Yes. <laughs> you guys right. Are y'all all right? You guys follow that? Everybody? <laughs> You're right. That was heavy. You guys understand that? That's what we do. We do that in the opposite, though, y'all. We'll see things, our mind will tell us what we see, and we just mess it up by our mind. It ain't what we saw. It's not what you see that messes you up. It's where your thoughts go according to what you see. Are y'all hearing me? Okay? So one way that the bad seeds are entered into our body or into our heart is what we see. Okay? So these things come in according to what we see. How do we deal with what we see? We deal with what we see by talking to ourselves, planning some good enough cars. Where's my card lady back there? I sure miss her back there. She is not here. My God. Oh, I miss her. Tell her that I miss her. <laughs> pray for her. I don't think she's coming back. All right. I'll pray for her. I love the, the method that God uses. God will see something. God will see something before it even comes to existence. Y'all hear that? He actually pulls or has the idea in himself, pulls that idea out of himself before he even see it. Okay? What he's doing as he's pulling this idea, we need to close the door. As he's pulling that idea out of himself, the vision that he sees is already inside of his thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. That means he had to pour something good inside of his mind, inside of his heart, inside of himself, so that what he thinks is going to be known by what he sees. Mm -hmm. That's why God said in the Bible, you'll see in verse 3, 6, 9, in Genesis 1, 3, 6, 9, 11, and all, no, it says, and God said, and God said, and God said, later on, God, it says, and God saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because God said all these things, now God was like, I want to see what I said. Oh. Ah. Right. 
Mm. That's all right. You guys see that? God says, now I said all these things, but I want to see what I said now. Wow. And if you notice in those verses, in the chapter of Genesis, God said everything that he said that he saw was good. Are y'all hearing me? So what you're going to have to start doing is doing just like the one that's created you. You start saying yeah. good things, yes. then you can start looking yeah. for good things. Oh, y'all here. Hallelujah. You guys understand that? Yes. Because the more you dictate or the more you say to yourself what has happened to you, I'm not telling you to deny what has happened. I'm telling you to get past what's happened and begin to speak some life to what has happened to you. Are yeah. oh, y'all understanding me? Yes. When we begin to speak life to what has happened to us, all of these things come through this avenue, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Confession. Yes, sir. That's right. Sure. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just, yes, sir. Just plain confession. Mm -hmm. Just saying, yes, I did. Yes, it did hurt me. Mm -hmm. Some of the situations of the issues that many of us have been through mm -hmm. almost killed us almost destroyed us. Had our minds thinking that there is only one way to get rid of this pain and that is to take my own life. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So your mind dictate, dictated that to your whole body, your whole self. And it has caused a darkness to come over your mind, your eyesight, your hearing, your touch, your fit, everything to where you have just given up in being who you were created to be all together. So now you find yourself just existing. Does it make a difference of what comes your way or how you are presented or what you present yourself as? You're just existing. And the only power hold that you can pull on that will keep you alive to the point, and some of us have gotten to this point, which is not of God, is that you deal with every day the thing that keeps you alive is what was designed to take you out. That's what keeps you alive, is the very thing that hurts you. So you thrive on that thing. Jesus gave us a very serious parable when he was talking about the sower and the seeds. He said some was planted on, on the wayside and all those. Y'all remember the parable? Anybody remember that? Yes. Was, some was planted on this ground and some grew up real fast and all that. But he says, guess what? Some was planted on some good ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ones that were planted on good ground began to multiply. Some 60. Some 30, some 100 fold. They begin to multiply. So the things that you say, you must know that you have the ability and the right and the power to speak life yes. to Amen. yourself. Amen. You're going to have to change the way that you talk. You're going to have to start digging inside of what God has already put inside of you. One thing about God, about the sowing, God loves doing this to people. I, I love when he does this. God will show you how great you are. Anybody been there? God ever showed you a vision of yourself? Just yes, you, you, yes, You've yes. made it past. God will show you over here and he'll say, now come here, now come here, come here, come here, come here. And he'll bring you way over here and say, now go get who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's, and it's awesome of him because he never tells you about the things that you're going to be distracted by. <laughs> He does that on purpose. He never tells you about the sideline distractions. He just says, all I want you to do is focus on you. Right? And he says, now go get you. What we do on the way of getting ourselves is we look at everything around us. That's true. And get distracted. Well, I'm going to stop over here for a few years. And we stay here for a few years. And what's so terrible about the whole situation is where we stop that, we begin to blame God for us stopping there. 
we stayed there and we said, God, I'm doing this because this is the will of God. I believe that God has sent me here. I don't like the pastor. He's just really messing up things. He talked about us. He ain't helping my family. But God, I know you sent me here. Lord God, I'm going to stay right here until you tell me to move. And God says, I told you to focus on this way of here a long time ago. And then we move a little bit and we just we get distracted over here and to all the troubles and all the things that are going on in the world. And God says the reason why these sideline distractions are distracting you is because you're off course. I told you to stay over here and go get you. Many of us get distracted on one point. I really love this point. It's because we want to take everybody to go get us. <laughs> Uh, are y'all hearing me? Yeah. We want to bring people. God says, you go get you. And we want to, come on, go get me. Come on. Everybody's going with me to go get me. I'm bringing my family, the kids, everybody. Just, I'm going, everybody, God say, go get me. There's a very powerful story in the Bible about Abraham and Lot. Yeah. I've heard a lot of ways that it's been taught or brought out. And, I, and, I, and, and it bothers me because God never told Lot to go. But Abraham, so loving and so kind, that he took him with him. Wow. And sometimes, y'all, the people that you want to bring with you when God said for you to go get you, it's not of God. So don't believe, do not believe that the people that you're bringing with you that is not supposed to come with you are not going to slow down your movement. That's true. All right now. Lot ended up going to a place to where the cattle grew so much, him and his brother, that they had to be separated. And God says, here's a land here and there. His brother, who was, or Lot, was that one not even supposed to come, took the best land. Wow. Sure did. He's not even supposed to be on the mission. He took the best land. Abraham being all good again. And go ahead, you take that, no problem. You go ahead and take that. As they moved further, Lot decided he wanted to camp in some more in Sodom. I'm going to go down to Sodom and have a good time. Get caught up in Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah was two different cities, y'all. Mm -hmm. They became so wicked and so big that it became one. That's why they begin to call it Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? It became so big, then Abraham had to go in there to go get Lot, who got caught up in the mess because the enemy had the right to mess with him. Why? Because Abraham messed up and brought him with him. Wow. When God told Abraham, I'm taking you to a land that you know not of. He didn't say I'm taking you and Lot. He said, I'm taking you to a land that you don't even know of. It is a land that is so good, I'm going to provide for you all this. Abraham wanted to bring Lot. And many of us bring a whole lot of folk to our purpose and our God-given destiny. And they don't even know that they are destroying it every step that you take. Because they are not designed called or chosen to go with you. And I know this feeling thing that we have as people, we just really want folk to go with us. And I, I discovered something though, uh, one of the reasons. And it comes from out of this book. You all got to read this book of bitterness this woman wrote. And it deals with Pride. We don't go seek ourselves for ourselves. We go seek ourselves to let everybody know that we found ourselves. Wow. Mm. We have been so messed up inside by the pain of the issues that came through what we've seen and what people had done to us that all we find ourselves being satisfied with is being recognized. Mm. Mm. Y'all all right? Yeah. Everybody okay? Yeah. All right, do that for me one more time. Uh, Woo! Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> breathe, okay. 
That's one way. That's one process. That's the eyes. Y'all write that down. Eyes is seeing. That's why. That's why one of the, the the bitterness comes in is by us seeing. It's not bad what you see. It's what your mind takes control of what you're seeing. Y'all understand that? Yes. Our mind has to be so renewed.